I want to welcome everyone back to another installment of our uh, blog for Compelling Ministries. I want to say thank you for joining in with us today. And the purpose of these blogs is, is to address some, some scriptures in a short manner, not in like a full sermon or anything, but just to take some scriptures and to uh, get at the meat of it and what the heart of God is saying. And I, I will warn you today that it, some of the stuff that I may say out of the scriptures today may, may be a little challenging for a lot of us. With no further ado, let's get into the Word of God. Genesis chapter 2. Uh, if you have a Bible, I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And it says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. Verse 16 says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Verse 17, But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Now I'm going to stop there in the reading of the word. Again, that says Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. And I want to tell you, when God says something, he means exactly what he says. And when he warned Adam, who then warned his wife of, of the process of what, if they partook of the wrong fruit, what would happen. And I'm not here today to argue it, what kind of fruit it was or what they actually did to, to cause the sin. The point is that they disobeyed God. God had specifically told them what not to do, and they very much disobeyed the voice of God and what God had commanded them to not do. And we find in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Verse 6, So that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her, her husband with her, and he ate. And again, going directly against what God had told them to do. But realize this, that when man and woman partook of the fruit of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they were in blatant disobedience to what God had said. And so many times we find ourselves knowing the Word of God, understanding the Word of God and what He is saying, but how many times do we blatantly go against what God has said? But when they disobeyed God, we know the result. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And we find there in verse 17, God had already told Eve what would happen to her. And then in verse 17, because of their sin, verse 17 says, then, then to Adam, God said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles. It shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. Verse 19, in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. Out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. When man and woman sinned, there were curses that were released upon mankind because of their sin. Upon this earth, things were released, and the laws that we know on the earth largely are effect because of the fall of man. Sickness was not in mankind before man fell. When man fell and man sinned before God, and sin was unleashed upon this earth through mankind, into mankind came death. For God had warned Adam that in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. And I'm telling you, there are things that, are, that were unleashed into mankind and upon mankind's physical body. Now we know that the, the Bible tells us in John 10.10 10, that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but that Jesus came to bring life and that more abundantly. The purpose the enemy has is to, to destroy you and I, to steal from you, to kill from you, and to destroy you and I. But we know the Word tells us that Jesus came to bring life and that more abundantly. But in this case right here, when man fell, things happened right there that, that now we blame God for so many times. And we want to question God. Many, many accuse God because of accidents or because of sicknesses. Many accuse God because of death of a loved one. But I want to tell you where it all started. It all started when sin came into mankind. But we want to blame God because of things that happened, because of 
sicknesses and diseases because someone close to us dies of a sickness or disease we want to question God we want to blame God but I'm telling you a lot of it has to do with the choices that we as people make there's a thing called sowing and reaping and we don't want to talk about sowing and reaping when it comes to sin and the effects of sin we want to talk about sowing and reaping when it talks about being blessed by God in finances and in givings and what God's going to give back unto us. But we don't, we don't want to talk about what happens when we sin and what can come into the physical body. When we read in Romans chapter 1 when God gave them over to, to a reprobate mind and the, the things that came into them because of their sin. When someone lives in a lifestyle of sin, yes, God can forgive. God will restore but there is something to do with the law of sowing and reaping. Yes, God can heal. Absolutely, God can heal the past. God can heal things that happened in the past. God can heal physical things. But when I go sowing my wild oats, when I go and I'm doing things that are contrary to the word of God, and then I want to ask God to forgive me, I am telling you there are consequences to our actions. And the consequence here was, yes, God forgave them, and God made a way through Jesus of escape, but man was still kicked out of the garden. Man still then was cursed in the sense of having, to, the ground was cursed, excuse me, in the sense that man then had to till the ground in order to have food coming out of the ground to eat. Women had to, through child laborers and pains of child laboring, is given birth to, to their children. Things happened and there was consequences because of sin. Today the enemy is trying to, to accuse us. He is trying to, to trick us. He is trying to get us and to deceive us into, into sinning and, and saying, well, it's not really that bad. And I'm here today to tell you it is that bad and more. When the word of God says, thou shalt not covet when it says do not lie, when it says do not, that's exactly what God is saying. And so many times today in the culture we live in, we try to dull down sin and we try to, to make it where it's not as bad as, as what preachers want to say it really is, especially the old time revivalist preachers and how you know, some today tell, 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 tell some of us that you need to tone it down and you don't preach against sin, just preach the love of God. The love of God is real and he, the grace of God is amazing and his mercy is enduring. But there is consequence to sin. When someone sins, there is consequence to that sin. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we cannot go around accusing God and trying to say, well, God did this on me. God put this on me. God did this to me. Yes, I agree. He allows because we chose sin. And there are many times when we still choose sin. So many of us, we look at someone like Peter or Judas, and we, we look at Judas and we say, I would never deny Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. I would never do that. But yet in so many of our lives, how many of us turn our backs on God for so much less than 30 pieces of silver? When we find ourselves in a compromising situation, how many of us, we choose to be friendly with our friends and to laugh with our friends at things that we know is contrary to the Word of God? When we're watching something that we know the Word of God does not honor, but yet we don't run away from it. But I will also say this, that when you choose righteousness and you choose to follow God with all of your heart like a man named Joseph, because of his following God and his standards, it cost him so much. He found himself in prison. He found himself in a dungeon in prison because of his standards of righteousness. Yes, I know God honored him in the end, but it was years before God got him out of that situation. And so many of us, we want to accuse God. We want to accuse the devil. We want to do a lot of things. I'm telling you, what you sow is what you reap. Don't blame the devil for a lot of what we're going through. A lot of it is because of our own choices and our own decisions. The devil has never made you do anything. Yes, the temptation would be there, but we know the Word tells us that in the day of temptation, God has made a way of escape. I want to encourage you today. God has a plan for you. There are choices in front of you. 
Even as God told Cain that sin was crouching at his door, there are things that are crouching upon many of us right now that if we choose to do that, death is there waiting upon us. And I don't necessarily mean death in the sense of your, your life, but death in the sense of your future, your hope, your marriage, your children, your relationships. Things that we do affects what goes on around us on a daily basis. I want to read another scripture to you. In James, James chapter 1, it says over here in James chapter 1, verse 14, But each one of us is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own desires. And the King James says, by his own lust. Verse 15 says, Then when lust or the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. When I choose sin, when I choose to go the way of what, what Adam did here and said no to the desires of God, no to the will of God, no to the commands of God, it all starts deep down inside of here. I have a thought that I didn't bring into captivity. Something happened and I allowed it to take root in my heart. Lust. Each one of us is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire or lust and enticed. We allow things to entice us. We allow things to take root inside of our mind. It grows inside of our hearts. And when it grows into fullness, it brings forth sin, which brings forth death. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. We must choose life. We must make it our aim and our goal. No matter what other people may be doing, no, what, no matter what other ministers or ministries or people in our local churches may be doing, we have to make the right decisions and the right choices every day. People try to offend us. People try to take advantage of us. But I'm telling you right now, the love of God is deeper and greater than any offense. But we must rely upon Him and turn away from sin. We find over in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know how to say it any more plainly than that. We try to make amends and try to, to say it's okay to do these things. But I'm telling you, the word of God is clear. It says, do not be deceived. Again, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. In the middle of it, it says, do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers or extortioners will inherit the kingdom of of God. But the next verse says, And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. What an amazing verse. We used to be people of sin. We used to be people that were reviled and adulterers and fornicators. We were people of the world. But verse 11 tells us, and such were, past tense, that's who we were. That's not who we are anymore. We cannot continue in sin. In fact, Paul tells us, should we continue in sin so that grace may abound? God forbid. We must come out of it and be ye separate, says the Lord. Holiness. God is looking for holiness. He's coming back for a bride that is holy and blameless and spotless. You and I have choices ahead of us. You and I have choices all around us on a daily basis. Will we choose life? Will we choose what the Word of God tells us? Will we sow good seed and reap a good harvest? Or will we continue at times to sow other seeds of briars and brambles and, and expecting a good harvest? It's about choices. It's about decisions. Each one of us we have to walk it out. Every one of us has to walk it out. It's a day-to-day -day thing. When I get up in the morning, 
And I greet the presence of God and I say, Holy Spirit, thank you for allowing me one more day. And I commune with my, my God and he communes with me and I listen for his voice. It is a wonderful thing to be in right relationship with God. And today, if you are not in right relationship with God, I want to encourage you. Contact us and we will help you. We will show you. We will lead you to the right place to find Jesus. We'll give you scriptures and verses. Contact us if you have prayer requests. If you want to know Jesus, we want to lead you to the presence of God. No matter where you are, contact us at the contact on your screen. And if you'll reach out to us, we want to pray with you. If you have prayer requests, we want to pray for God is the healer. Yes, as I said earlier, when we choose sin, things are released and, and sickness comes. But Jesus brings life and he heals sickness. He heals disease. It doesn't matter to me how you got the disease. I want to tell you and affirm to you, Jesus is the healer. We've been all over the world and we've seen the, the lame walk, the blind see. The deaf hear, eyes are restored. Watched a man had a cataract in his eye, and I watched that cataract fall into his eyelid, and he took his finger and flicked that cataract upon the ground. I've seen so many miracles, and I believe the same God that heals all over the world is the same God that wants to heal you today. But first, let's repent. Let's get right with God. Let's let go of the past. And let's let the restoration of the grace of God restore us and make all things new. Receive the grace and the mercy of God. And I declare to you today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the countenance of our God shine upon you and bring you peace. And I declare Jesus is king. <laughs> and the devil is still a liar. Be blessed by the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us today. Be blessed. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so YouTube will let you know when we upload new content. If you'd like to reach out to us, head over to www.compellingministries.com. Click the contact link in the upper left corner. Or if you prefer to reach out by mail, check the description below for our address. God bless and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.